with another episode of What's for Dinner. Today we're going to call this a Sunday edition. Um, I want to show you this. I just recently purchased this book. Um, I am a self-professed cookbook junkie and this one just, uh, it actually jumped into my cart when I walked past it while I was in the store so there was very little I could do except take it home. I adored, um, <coughs> pardon me. Jamie Oliver. J him, Jamie Oliver. I adore him. And I adore what he did with his Food Revolution television show earlier this year. If any of you were able to watch that, it really was eye-opening and really a lot of fun to see. Um, this particular cookbook, it really focuses on helping people get back to the basics of cooking their own wholesome food at home instead of relying on takeout food and fast food and junk food and, and kind of bringing us back to where we should be cooking for our families, sitting down to dinner every night, and um, in, in conjunction with this, I have been asked by a few people if I would show them how to make beef wellington. Well, with the economy being what it is, and beef tenderloin being, you know, you need to pay at least $40 for a piece of beef tenderloin to make a beef wellington. Um, in, in this particular economy, I didn't think that it was necessary to actually do that. But then I, I open up this cookbook and I find this fabulous looking recipe for a ground beef wellington, which is like meatloaf wellington. And I thought to myself, well, this is perfect. So we're going to go with this and I'm going to show you how to do this. Total disclosure, I've never made this recipe before, so we're both going to do this together and we're going to see how it turns out. So let me show you what goes into it. It has one pound of lean ground beef, and this I actually was fortunate enough to get at the Whole Foods, so it's grass-fed and local ground beef. Two portobello mushroom caps that have been uh, roughly chopped, one medium onion that has been chopped, one carrot that has been chopped, this is two celery stalks that has been chopped, two cloves of garlic that have been minced, one egg, and two sheets of frozen puff pastry that have been thawed out. I'm also going to use salt, pepper, and some marjoram in this today. So the first order of business is to go ahead and get our vegetables sautéed. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here. I have about um, two teaspoons of olive oil heating in this saucepan. And I'm just going to add my vegetables in and get the rest of them. say that the recipe in the book I have altered a little to suit my family's tastes. It does call for frozen green peas to go in here. I don't care for peas and I didn't really like the way it looked in the finished product so I'm not going to use them. And it also called for rosemary. Now I like rosemary but today I'm going to go with marjoram instead. I uh, would have preferred to go with thyme even more than that, but I didn't have any on the shelf today and I didn't feel like looking for it, so we're going to go with marjoram because that is easy. All right. We're going to saute everything. I'm going to put the mushrooms in here as well. And we're going to let these saute until everything is cooked through and the onions are translucent and the mushrooms have rendered some of their liquid. And I'll be back as soon as we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, we're back and our vegetables are completely sauteed exactly where we want them. Now, what we're going to do is I have taken a small baking sheet and I'm just going to put them over here. I'll put these in my refrigerator for 15 minutes. And the reason that I spread them out on the baking sheet was so that they would cool off faster. So I'm going to stick these in the fridge for 15 minutes and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to mix up the meat mixture. So I'll be right back. Okay, we've uh, taken our vegetable mixture out of the refrigerator and it's nice and cool. And the reason we want this cool is because we don't want to put hot veggies in raw meat because this is just going to make a big mess. So what I have done here is I've taken my one pound of ground beef and I put in some salt, some pepper, some marjoram, about a teaspoon of marjoram. I beat up that egg in here and I added half of the egg to the meat mixture. I know that sounds weird, but that's what it said to do. We're going to add our veggies in here. I have washed my hands. They are impeccably clean. And now we're just going to mix this all together. Um, this didn't call for any breadcrumb or anything like that. It's just the meat and the vegetable mixture. Okay. 
Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is my meat, the, the ground beef has been sitting out um, for about a half an hour before I started working with it. You don't want to um, use ice cold meat here because it will affect the cooking time and when you have things at room temperature and everything is the same then you're going to have more consistent product. So, alright, that's done. Now we're just going to set this aside for now and then we're going to deal with our, uh, our puff pastry which I have been thawing. It's been out of the freezer for about an hour and you want it to be completely thawed. It does say to uh, use two sheets of puff pastry. Now, I'm going to dry my hands off. I'm going to flour my board. And then we're going to unfold some of this pastry. I think I may have let it thaw out too long because now it's sticking to itself. Let's see if we can't get it to separate. Well, shoot. Okay, well let me deal with this and I'll be right back. Okay, we fixed our little mishap. Um, it did stick together, so you might want to not let it sit out so long, otherwise it'll stick together. But, you know, no worries. I just kind of overlapped them a little in the middle and I rolled them out. They need to be rolled into a rectangle that's approximately 12 by 16, and that's what we have here. Then we're going to take our ground beef mixture. We're going to do this. Mold it into a nice, even sausage shape. So. There we go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get out our pastry brush, which I did not do yet. But here it is. We're going to brush all the sides with a little bit of this remaining beaten egg. This will act as a sort of glue, and so you get a good seal all the way around. Now, now what do we do? We just roll the beef up in the pastry. I'm going to just roll it like this. And I'm going to roll it so that the seam side is down. And I'm going to squeeze the ends together like this. And the way that it's described in the recipe is that it will look like a big Christmas cracker, you know, one of those fun uh, rolled up tubes uh, with the wrapping paper on them. And at Christmas time, you open them up, and, <coughs> and there's pretty little gifts of little toys in there, little pieces of candy and okay. So here I have some this is fresh parchment, it just got stuck in the oven. I'm going to attempt to pick this up like so. I'm just gonna kind of gently make sure that it's all compacted there. Okay, now we take the rest of this beaten egg. I'm going to add a little water to it. All right. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And we're going to bake this for one hour. While this is baking, I'm going to um, make some roasted cauliflower. 
or some steam cauliflower rope rather and we're going to have that alongside our wellington there's really no need to have anything else with this because you don't need a starch because it's already wrapped in that rich puff pastry and we're going to go from there and i hope this is nice it looks wonderful i can't wait to try it so here we go into the oven 350 degrees for one hour we'll be back in an hour cross your fingers i'm sure it's going to be great okay it's been a little over an hour i turned the oven off about five minutes ago and look at this does this not look amazing oh i am so happy look at that that is beautiful okay so now i guess it's time to fix you a plate so i'm gonna go i'm gonna prep this for service and i'll be right there you back. go everyone ground beef what? wellington <laughs> i am so sorry i totally went blank ground beef wellington which looks absolutely amazing it looked beautiful when it came out of the oven and I am so so excited and impressed and I am so ready to try this and we did um, some steamed cauliflower with some brown buttered breadcrumb and uh, this is our Sunday dinner and I wanted to share with you before we leave a little passage from from Jamie Oliver's book which is entitled Jamie's Food Revolution which is where this recipe has come from so it's just it's not very long and I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's really integral to what we do for some of us who share on YouTube and why we want to share the way we cook and the recipes we make with other people because I find it really satisfying this community that we have here and that we all work together to help each other learn new things so in that vein when I bought this book and I read the introduction this is what Jamie had to say <clears throat> I need you to get personally involved. Pass it on by pledging to learn just one recipe from each chapter of this book. Master these in your own home first, and then pass it on by teaching at least two people, preferably four. I think I've covered it. How to cook them? Make it fun by having a bit of cook, but maybe by having a cooking party where you reach your friends or family in the comfort of your home. Then most importantly, you need to get your guests to promise that they will pass it on to more people and then get those people to pass it on and so on and so on and so on. Is this starting to sound like a commercial? But he goes on to say that if you teach four people how to make a recipe then each of them teaches four more people who each teach four more people. The cycle only needs to repeat itself seven times and we've packed out Yankee Stadium one and a half times. Re we've packed Yankee Stadium one and a half times. Repeat it 13 times and we've got more than the entire population of the United States cooking. High aspirations, I admit, but why the hell not? I know for a fact that there will be hundreds of thousands of you who will definitely get involved. Just imagine the swell of fun, teaching and learning that could be going around this country. It's amazing if you think about all the social and health benefits this movement could have. I know for sure that if we do this, a load of other things will start to fall into place. And I agree. I think it's important we all sit down together as a family. We all share together as a community, and we all get back to doing what's important, which is cooking food for our families, good wholesome food, stop going to the drive through pay attention to what you're putting in your body and in the mouths of your children, because if we don't do it now, then the future is certainly looking bleak. But I hope you enjoyed this tonight. I really hope you try this because it's so, so easy. So until next time, I'll see ya.